We're gonna start off, we have Dave Strum, he's gonna tell us a story from the comic book coast. Let's all give it a nice round of applause. recognize some of this style from the Da Vinci Code, maybe, which started this whole mess in the first place. Yeah. Anyhow, prologue, or chapter zero for people who can count. The Seaside City Convention Center, the main hall, the BC Studios, the last super display, a Thursday, 4.07 p.m. Renowned comic book artist Jack Diarly staggered hands first towards the warm flesh-like silicon contents of the double B portion of the six-foot-tall Holly Grail statue in the blue super suit with golden grail chest logo instead of in exposed cleavage. It did expose long legs to the right up to show cheeks cut that Jack had sewn into it. His hands hit both targets and groped, even as his middle-aged 310-pound body undulated and bled, since it had two bullet holes in it. And as often the case with the dying, Jack had a flashback of his life, starting with the last five minutes. The Seaside City Convention Center, the main hall, the BC Studios, the last super display, a Thursday, 4.02 p.m. The tall, pale man loomed over Jack like a six-foot-three lamppost in a dark gray robe. Jack sat back harder against the base of the 15-foot-high, cross-shaped, high-tech and LED blinky mock-up of the Superfix machine. The man spoke chillingly, mournfully, Swedish accent lead. Y'all dead, you forgot to write the part of how Jack got that booty toy in him. Jack snipped. Yeah, and it ruined my rare triple E Holly Grail t-shirt with the Got Supers logo. <laughs> Oops. The Seaside City Convention Center, the main hall, the BC Studios, the last super display, a Thursday, 3.59 p.m. Creak, when an unseen ominously opening door. Uh-oh, better hurry, Jack thought. He tossed the last of Terry Silver's artwork onto the pile at his feet, then smugly scanned his dozen poster site artworks now on the walls, sequentially showing Holly Grail going from C cup to triple E. He fished his hand into his pocket while running his beady eyes over everything in the last super display for shadowy movements of fanboys wanting a triple E sketch or someone else. His eyes slammed to a halt. The intellected car's driver's side door, door is open. Big, black, armored, I guess a missile in a tank had a baby. Suddenly, a sound sounded. Whoosh! Jack turned his face toward the whoosh, settling his cheeks wobbling. Hmm, nobody at the Golden Last Super Supper table. Thrones are vacant except the sitting statue of the monk. Too bad the succubus statue hasn't arrived yet in all its yummy, skimpily spandex, jiggly glory. Jack drooled slightly, then gulped loudly. The bad guy is always... He slowly turned around and jumped. The intellectual statue in Batman as black cowl, cape, and full body armor glared at him. Jack sneered. It was holding hands with the Holly Grail statue. You don't deserve her. The Holly Grail statue was sadly looking up at the open wrist and ankle restraints on the superfix. Jack faced front again. He listened. Nothing. He pulled a match out of his pocket, lit it, and yelled, Maybe this will flush you out. He dropped it. Whoosh! Robe darkly flapping, voice Darth Vader knowing. The monk swooped towards Jack. Jack pulled and aimed a pistol. Die, fanboy, die! Bang! Thud. Jack hit the floor like a sack of wet cement, briefly earthquaking it. His pistol skidded away from him. The tall, pale man reholstered his Star Trek phaser shaped pistol and stomped out the flames. He laid back his robe's hood, revealing a blonde crew cut too fine to hide his vaguely cubicle skull. His face went ashen at the sight of the ashes, which scattered in a breeze that came from um, uh, a nearby air conditioning duct. Yeah, that's a good cinematized image. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo, Jack said, sitting up against the base of the superfix. You Sith are so whiny. Jack's nose. No, the tall, pale man leaned towards Jack, his spooky face, bad breath close. I am a fanboy. Now where is it? Jack's nose wrinkled. Pig you, what do Scandinavian fanboys eat for lunch? Ludifice keeps me humble and chaste. He frowned at Jack's artwork. You can use some. He frowned harder at Jack. For the scary last time, there... Oh, there it is. 
A long, pale arm shot up and yanked a graphic novel out of the large artwork bag next to Jack. The man nodded. Then, that was easy. I'd do a triumphant laugh if I were not Lutheran. I expected to have to do a puzzle since the word code is in this book's title. The author. I don't do puzzles. They waste time. Jack's lip curled. Lazy. The man's ice blue eyes ice picked into Jack's. Just to check if I had to silence you, tell me the secret. Jack smiled dreamily. I fantasize that superheroines are real, and Holly Grail visits my penthouse, and we hop into my hot tub filled with warm boysenberry jam. The man looked nauseated. Not that secret. Jack wiped a red trickle from his lips. The secret that if fanboys find out they can save the world instead of tying towels to their backs, jumping off rooftops, and breaking their arms? The tall, pale man's face turned from pale to purple. He aimed his pistol between Jack's eyes. Wait, said Jack. A famous couple 2,000 years ago had kids and their bloodline sucked their eyes today. Everybody knows that. And the critical bang. Oh, Jack frowned as his, at his second bullet hole. What was that for? The tall, pale man's hands were empty. I did not shoot you that time. The author reholstered his pistol. I did. Say something diversionary. Secrets keep readers reading. Jack thought a moment. Um, Terry Silver will be mad at Holly Spencer for the wrong reason. The tall, pale man sighed. Well, you don't know. My work here is done, except for my scary parting line. He raised a sagely finger. Sorry about the holes in you. Jack sneered. Worst parting line ever! The man deepened his voice. Pain builds character. I thought you weren't that stupid Da Vinci assassin. <coughs> the man's forehead creased. Life is a mylar bag. Will you get out of here? She's fought the grouch. The tall pale man rehooded his head and whooshed away, whapping fishy gelatinous scent into Jack's nose. Jack choked. You just finished writing my death scene so I can get out of this book already. His life waning, Jack crawled to a nearby phone. Dave, I used my cell phone. Oh. And as he desperately tried to remember the all-important phone number, that's on my speed dial. I left voicemail already. Really? Really. He smiled lustily. Now I must summon all my remaining facilities and strength for my final task. The Seaside City Convention Center, the main hall, the BC Studios, the last super display, a Thursday, 4.07 p.m. Jack groped to the Holly Grail statue and wait. Jack, you still have to draw messages with your blood. Jack pouted, his hands still busy. Do I have to? If you don't, I'll shoot you again. So what? I got two bullet holes in me anyhow. And then the tall guy force feeds you Ludovisk. Jack's face twisted with terror. No, no, anything but that. Sound effects. Draw, bleed, draw, smear, erase, draw, bleed, draw, bleed, bleed, draw, 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 done. Jack panted with low blood supply exhaustion. I'm done. Can I please die of my wounds instead of old age? Jack hoped that the secret would be used by the right hands. Gasp, choke, by the hope of the world. Wheeze. By the one who, bop. Jack. Hello? You're not supposed to die yet. Come on! Kick, kick, kick. Poke, poke. Poke, poke. Oh, well. Now I know what a mouse feels like, what, what a cat feels like when the mouse that's been playing with stops moving. <laughs>